Okay, so we're now going to build our main calculator class, which will take any type of operation, whether it's additional division, which we've built, or if you wanted to have a go at testing and then building uh, subtraction and multiplication, then you can go ahead and do that as well. So obviously we want to first of all create our test. So let's start by just creating our calculator test in here, like so. And we'll again, as always, pull over our sample test just so we have our structure in there. And let's go ahead and start to write this out. So let's change over the class name to calculator test. And the first thing I want to test is whether we can actually set operations. Now we're going to give the ability to set a single operation, but we're also going to give the ability to set multiple operations in one go if we want to. And really when we're building this kind of thing, we don't know how this is going to look. This is the whole point of writing tests uh, to start with. So let's start with a single operation because this is pretty straightforward and we will say can set single operation like so. So let's go and first of all, new up an addition. So we can just say new app calculator addition, and we will go ahead and use this as normal. So we're now using things that we've already unit tested. So in here, we're gonna say set operands, and we'll save again, just five and 10. We'll just keep it really simple. So now we're gonna have our calculator class. So this is gonna be a new app and we can place it inside of calculator. So new app calculator calculator. And for this, we're going to say that we want from that calculator be able to be able to set an operation like so. And this operation is going to be addition. Now, how do we test that we have this operation in there? Well, we could say something like this assert count one calculator get operations like so. And you can even do an assertion to check that what you get back from this is an instance of addition. So we could add that in in a minute. We'll see how we get on. So let's go ahead and run our tests. We get a failure because we don't have our calculator class. So let's go ahead and create this first of all. So over in calculator, let's go and create a new calculator.php class and let's make this pass. So the namespace is obviously app calculator and our class is calculator. And let's just refer back to our test. Once again, we know that we have set operation. So let's create this method, set operation. And I want to type hint this so I can type hint now to this interface because I know that any operation needs to uh, implement this interface. So let's go ahead and do that and say operation. And now we probably want up here something like operations to be uh, an array like so. And then we just want to say this operations and we want to append on the operation that we've passed in like so. So let's go ahead and create this operations method to get all of our operations. And that's as simple as just returning this operations like so. So let's go ahead and run our tests and we get green. So we know that we can now set an operation. OK, so what we now want to do is implement another test uh, because we want to be able to set multiple operations. And then later what we'll do is we'll create another test to check if these are ignored, if they're not instances of our operation interface. So if that doesn't make sense, bear with me. We'll go ahead and create this test first. So can set multiple operations. And let's go ahead and check this out. So let's say we had two additions that we wanted to pass into our calculator, maybe addition one, and then we had a similar one here, uh, addition two. It doesn't really matter what we're adding up. So let's go ahead and just change this over as well. And we can change these as well. So let's say two add two. Okay, so we have a calculator here as normal. Now what we're gonna say is something like calculator and we would probably have set operations. And into this, we would have an array of uh, separate operation. So addition one and then addition two. So we want to do a similar assertion, check that the count is now two. Obviously this is going to fail initially. Let's go over and run this and we get a failure. Brilliant. So set operations doesn't exist. Let's go ahead and implement this and then we'll look at a couple of the problems. So let's go ahead and write this out. Set operations. This will take an array in like this, 
which immediately says to me, well, I can pass anything into here now. So later we're going to have a check in here, which will check if uh, every item in here is an in instance of operation interface. So to set operations, we would just say this operations, and we would set this to array merge using the operations we already have in here, merging in the operations that we've passed in. So we go ahead and run this and we get green. So we know that that now works. So now let's go and create a test to check if we pass in something that isn't an operation. So something we can't call calculate on, it will fail. So let's, or at least it will ignore it. So let's go ahead and create this test. So create a test here. Okay. So we're going to say operations are ignored if not instance of operation interface. So again, I'm making these really long and descriptive. So uh, anyone kind of glancing at it or even yourself in future glancing at it knows exactly what this is doing. So let's go and grab over an addition so we can use this to test it out like so. And let's go and create a new calculator instance just here. And let's say calculator set operations. And we only need to test this for set operations because we know that we will get an error anyway if we try and pass anything into set operation, the singular, if it's not an instance of operation interface because we've typed into it. So into this, I'm going to pass in addition, which is an instance of operation interface. We know that we can call the correct method on it and I'm going to pass in something silly. So we are going to assert here that the count is one because we want cats to be ignored, but we want to keep this one. So it should end up with one in there. And you could pass in multiple here as well if you wanted to, like so. So let's go ahead and run our test. You can see here failed asserting the actual size three, which is addition then cats and dogs matches size one or expected size one. So this is a problem. We need to fi fix this up and then our test will pass. So over to calculator in here, how might we do this? Well, we're going to look at a pretty rough way of doing it first of all, and then we're going to go back and refactor it. And just at this point, again, as a side note, it's important to note that when you're building things, you don't need to uh, implement some kind of rough functionality for the sake of it. But later on, you might then refactor it. And that's the whole point. When we refactor it later on, we know that after we've refactored something, as long as we still get green, then it was a successful refactor. So let's go ahead and do a for each here. And I'm just going to use this as a means of filtering out any operations that I don't want. So I'm going to say as index. So we have that available and then operation. And I might say, uh, let's say if I wasn't really too sure what I was doing, I might say, well, if the operation that we have in this loop isn't an instance of the operation interface, then I might just use unset to get rid of it. Now that's not the best way of doing things. So we'll implement it now so it passes and then we'll go ahead and refactor this. So this is just filtering out anything that isn't an instance of operation interface and we should now get green, brilliant. Okay, so I'm gonna refactor this now and then as long as I get green still, I know that it's worked. In actual fact, we're gonna refactor it a couple of times. So we're gonna get rid of this and I'm gonna say, well, instead it might be better to have something like filtered operations using the array filter function, which is what it was built for. Now into this, we pass in operations. Then we have our callback just here, like so. And into this, we get an operation for each loop of this. Now in here, I could go ahead and say, well, if the operation in here isn't an instance of so let's go ahead and say instance of operation interface and we'll just say if it's not then we want to return false otherwise down here we want to return true so this is effectively doing the same thing just using array filter which is a little bit cleaner let's run our tests and it looks like we have got an error so this is a kind of classic example what has gone wrong here well, when we're kind of developing without tests, we might think, right, I'll build this in quickly uh, and then I'll go ahead and deploy it. Everything breaks. Now, in this case, what I've not done is I've not passed in the filtered operations to this. So it's not merging in the correct thing. So I go ahead and fix it up I run my tests and we get green. Now I'm going to further refactor this, I think, because really what we're doing here is a little bit more work than we need to. Uh, with array filter, we return false if we want to get rid of something out of an array and we return true if we want to keep something. Now, in this case, I could get rid of all of that 
And instead I could clean this up even further and just say return operation instance of, and then the interface I'm expecting, which will return a true or a false. So now run the tests again and we get green. So we've successfully refactored. So from the original solution to that other solution, finding an error and then going ahead and refactoring even more, we still get green and we know we're on track. So now that we've done all that, that might seem a lot of work, but we haven't actually done anything with calculating yet. So we want to check if this is yeah, this can actually calculate the result of any operations that we've passed in. So let's uh, create a test in here again using our dot block style, and we're going to create a can calculate result test. So just very, very simple test. So let's go ahead and pull over addition like so. And let's go and pull over our calculator like so. And let's go ahead and add a operand in. So set or an operator, sorry. So set operator addition. And we want to say this assert equals 15 calculator calculate. So I'm going to implement a new calculate method onto my calculator. So let's go ahead and run our tests and we see uh, set operator, that should be operation, like so. We get calculate method does not exist on our calculator. Makes sense. So let's go ahead and implement it. So down here, let's go ahead and create this out. So calculate. And for this, how would we calculate the result of uh, our operations? Well, in this case, we're really just interested in making this pass. So what we could do is we could say, well, to make this test pass, let's say grab the first operation and just calculate that. So in this case, I'm going to return this operations and getting the first one. And I'm going to call the calculate on that. We know at this point we're safe because we know that anything we pass in is an instance of operation interface, which we know has a calculate method. So in this case, when I run my test, I get green because we're taking the first one we passed in and it's working. Now that we have green, we want to talk about multiple results. So we want to return an array of results if we've set multiple operations. So again, we're just kind of following this through and making sure that we get green. So let's create this last test and this will be the last one, but hopefully you've got the hang of this by now and uh, we'll check that this works. So calculate method returns multiple results. So this is what we spoke about uh, initially. We want an array of results if we have multiple operations. So again, I'm just going to pull over addition just to keep things quicker. Addition one. In fact, let's just keep addition and then we'll do a division as well. So let's copy this over because it's pretty similar syntax. And let's just change this over to division, change this over to division. And we are going to say 50 divided by two, which should be 25, obviously, and this should be 15. We'll just add them there so we remember. So we are going to uh, new up a calculator. So again, we can pull this over from here if we want. We're going to say calculator, set operations. We want our addition in there and we want our division. Now, what do we want returned from this? Well, we want an array returned with 15 as the first result. That's the addition part of it. And we want 25. And then subsequently, if we wanted to add these results up, we could then pass them again into addition and it just kind of works in a loop. So that's why I built this calculator in this way. So the first thing that we want to make sure is that we actually get an array return from this calculator uh, method when we have multiple operations. So the first thing I'm going to do is say assert internal type. We want to check that the result of calculator calculate is an array. And then we want to check that the first element of this, so calculator calculate like so is 15. So we want to check that the first result is 15 and we want to check that the second result is 25 like so. So just to recap, we want an array back. And what we could actually do as well is run a similar test here to make sure that we're getting uh, an integer. And it obviously might not be an integer, but we could add more checks in there. 
and we are checking if it's an array. We're checking that the first result from that addition operation is 15 and the second one from that division is 25. So let's go ahead and run our tests. We obviously get red because what's happened is with our calculate method on our calculator class, this is just grabbing the first operation. So we're getting 15 and that is not an array. So in here, we need to now change this. So we actually go through all of our operations, if there are more than one, and then map them, calculate each result and return them in an array. So let's go ahead and in fact, we'll implement this first, then we'll go ahead and lastly just refactor it. So we're going to say if the count of the operations, so this operations is greater than one, then we want to say something like, and um, we could have some kind of result up here, which could be null. And then in here, we're going to say for each this operations as operation, we're going to say result like so, and we're going to append onto this array operation calculate. And then here we're going to return result. So we could in fact place this inside of here if we wanted to. Either way, our goal is just to make it pass. So we get the following. So we know that that works now. We know that it's not affected our original calculation, but now if we have multiple operands or operations, they are returning the correct result on the correct type. So let's just uh, refactor this just to finish up and then we are good to go. So we can keep this check in here, but better than looping once again is to use something like array map, I think. And in here we have a callback like so. We pass in what we want to map through this operations like so. Into this, we get an operation. And all we can do in here is return operation calculate. And all that will do is return an array with all of these results in. So last but not least, we run our tests and we get green. And there we go. Although a calculator doesn't seem that interesting, hopefully this has given you an idea about what you should be testing, breaking these up into separate units, constantly refactoring, and most importantly, making sure our tests pass every time we refactor something.